afternoon to all of you. Uh, it's nice uh, meeting you uh, virtually, at least. Um, see a lot of happy faces out there. Uh, before I start my presentation, um, I would like to share with you um, that I, I am honestly living my dream. And by that, uh, I'd like to convey to you that uh, look, look, look into your inner souls and ask yourself, what is your passion? What, what really drives you, motivates you, make you happy? Um, what it is uh, uh, that, that makes you completely whole? And, and try to follow that passion. Try, you know, try to find the profession, try to find uh, an experience where you can maximize uh, seeing yourself living that passion, okay? Um, so for me, uh, I have found myself uh, to be an entrepreneur, and um, I currently have two companies. Uh, my first company is called uh, E2Soul, Efficient Energy Solutions, and uh, I have been um, managing E2Soul for 10 years now, and what we do with E2Soul, very basically, is we transform underutilized uh, property assets like empty roofs, parking lots, um, uh, and in the latest case, uh, floating infrastructure into completely uh, power generating, storing power and distributing power, all for the purpose of helping our customers save uh, electrical ex expenditures and or find themselves into a revenue stream opportunity. Uh, today I'm here to share with you an experience uh, that I had in the last three years going on four with my latest venture. It's called Power Docs and let's see if I can um, share my screen in here. So share. I'm going to walk you can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing with uh, Power Docs right now. Okay, so uh, thank you again to the uh, uh, Stone Soup Group for allowing me to share my story with you guys. So uh, I am a sailor and I keep my sailboat on a mooring. And because of that, I do not have any access to electricity like, it, like I would have it at the marina. And so having a renewable energy development company, I decided to try to re-engineer and reinvent the mooring ball into a product that would actually would generate electricity, would store the power, and then would distribute the power so that then I could come in with my sailboat more and connect to the mooring where I would have electricity like if I was going to be at the, at the marina. Um, having electricity in the water allows me to then have uh, Wi-Fi services and then uh, also allows me to interconnect other things like uh, internet of things, cameras, uh, water quality uh, sensors, for example. So uh, with this particular product, we identify a need. First of all, identify a need, a problem in the market space, and then uh, identify what the, what the market potential is if you were to solve that need, if you were to, to, to come up with a solution to, to, to alleviate that need. Uh, from the moorings, from the power moorings, we looked around and we took a look at the floating docks and floating pontoons. And as you can see on the left, the problem with this current configuration right now is that it, you spend the money in all, this flow, in, in all this infrastructure that is actually doing absolutely nothing for you other than just allowing you to walk on it and, get, and getting back to shore. What we have done is we have taken this um, a floating infrastructure and we have converted into into a utility power plant 
it actually generates power. It stores the power batteries underneath in here. And then we use the, the marine power pedestal to actually distribute the power. And this uh, small uh, vessel that you see at the end of the dock is actually an electric uh, marine propulsion vessel. Uh, it is from a company in Canada called um, Canadian uh, All Electric uh, Boats. And uh, we, we showcased this unit at the Miami International Boat Show in 2018, where we actually demonstrated uh, recharging uh, electric marine propulsion uh, vessels uh, in the water. Um, in the very short three and a half years going to four, uh, as you can see, we started with the sustainable power mooring. Uh, we expanded into the uh, uh, solar power generating uh, docks and pontoons. Uh, right now, we're focusing on marinas, sustainable marinas, where we're looking to, to transform all the floating docks at a marina into uh, floating microgrids. Um, so they can uh, really generate and provide power uh, in situ. Uh, up in the upper um, uh, right-hand corner, uh, you're seeing a little drone that is uh, trying to land in one of our platforms. And this is for a project that we did for the, uh, for the Navy on a demonstration uh, at an annual event that they have in Newport, Rhode Island. It's called the uh, Advanced Naval Technology uh, exercises and uh, we demonstrated the capability to uh, recharge a drone wirelessly just like uh, uh, you know just like your your Apple phone or, or your iPhone uh, right now and then on the water uh, we also had uh, autonomous on the water vehicles that were able to dock into a platform and and uh, we also recharge them on the water through induction um, on the bottom uh, right-hand corner, uh, we are seeking to develop uh, what we refer to as floating, sustainable living communities at marinas. Um, and what's happening is that marinas right now have a lot of empty uh, spaces um, because of economic situations or for any other reasons. And so we, we are seeking an opportunity to, to, to redevelop marinas into sustainable floating living communities. Um, one is a reduced cost for, uh, 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 for owning or renting uh, you know, your residence, but also uh, uh, it allows you to be waterfront uh, and enjoy uh, a marina living community. And um, as of lately, we are uh, engaged on a project to design and commercialize a, a, a water quality uh, buoy uh, specifically for the aquaculture market uh, for the purpose of identifying the water quality levels uh, at aquaculture farming and then be able to communicate that to the owners of the farms so they can actually uh, provide a report when they sell their stock and uh, showcase that they have a superb water quality and therefore they can command a higher premium. Uh, let's see. These are some pictures uh, that we have from the uh, Miami International Boat Show where we're showing people really walking on top of the solar modules that we had, uh, showing that there's no problem in walking and pressing and there's none skid. Uh, we received um, uh, in the United States um, a Product Innovation Award uh, at the Miami International Show in 2018. And then we took the product to the Netherlands. Uh, and we also won most product innovation at the uh, Electric and Hybrid uh, Marine Propulsion Show in, in Amsterdam. Uh, these are some of the pictures that I was showing you uh, of the pilot projects that we did with the uh, with the Navy here uh, in uh, uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, this is a autonomous surface vessel uh, that has some uh, in instruments that uh, uh, profile the water quality in, in, in the underwater uh, mapping. 
and uh, with our platform at site, uh, it, it is able to come uh, near it, dock, and uh, and recharge and continue working, you know, 24/7. Uh, likewise for uh, for an air drone uh, in here. Um, you know, give you you know several examples where we have been. We have been in Newport, Rhode Island, showcasing products uh, in the uh, Newport Harbor. Uh, in New Bedford, this is our first pilot project for water quality, uh, remote monitoring, uh, unit in Miami, and then working with the Navy over here on the lower hand side. Um, we have roughly about six interns. One of the things that have really helped us um, uh, grow and continue to innovate uh, is the fact that we, we make a, a special uh, effort every year to uh, uh, recruit six to eight interns from different educational institutions to be part of our team and uh, share their passions in, uh, in our passion that we're doing. And uh, uh, the, other, the other thing that we, uh, uh, has helped us is that we like to collaborate with complementary businesses and companies. So we have uh, secure alliances and partnerships with complementary um, companies that uh, have helped us uh, through our journey here. Uh, some of our strategic partners, and you can see some of our local recognitions that we have received. Some of the things that we're currently focused on. So we're very interested in, uh, in, in sensor technology, of course, in energy storage in Internet of Things systems that we can connect to our power platform, um, uh, power transfer systems, this is for, for wireless induction, uh, power distribution, uh, 3D cameras, and the artificial intelligence that can be added to the 3K, 3D cameras for recognition above the water and, and, and below the waters. So, um, uh, as you can see, the field of um, blue tech, the field uh, of oceanographic, uh, and the field of environmental science, uh, it doesn't really have to be all about chemistry and, and analytics uh, and things of that nature. Uh, but there, there, there is a, big, uh, a bigger field of technology and technology products that involves uh, software, uh, renewable energy, uh, electrical engineering, artificial intelligence, uh, um, uh, you know, visual uh, illustrations. Uh, it, is, it is much more than just environmental sciences. So I just wanted to share that with you uh, and hopefully uh, leave you with uh, uh, with the hope that uh, the blue tech industry is really a big field and it really requires expertise from all different subjects that are happening on mainland earth, but because it is aquatic, it requires additional skills and additional uh, 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 expertise in the aquatic speaks. So, if, if you were to ask me, uh, you know, what field you want to get into in, 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 in today's uh, world and in, in, in future plannings uh, of the economy and where the world is going, uh, I would highly recommend that you uh, seriously consider getting involved in, in the blue tech industry. Um, and uh, right now I'm happy to answer any questions uh, about anything that uh, you would like to, uh, to learn, whether it is school, whether it is uh, business, uh, whether it is um, careers, uh, anything that would come to mind. I'm happy to share my, uh, my thoughts with you. I have a question. Yes. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. How are you? Um, how are you? I mean, I'm good, but how are you? I'm doing great, and especially that I'm talking to you. Thank you. Thanks. So um, I have a question. So um, how does the future look like for solar energy? So I wish I could answer the question 
in one minute, but if I can find or somebody can provide you your email, I can show you that the future is all renewables. Okay. And it, it we are we're currently in a transformation. Okay. So think about what the phone used to look like 20 years ago and think about what the phone looks like today. We are in the middle of that transformation right now in all the cars that we drive. We're gonna be driving electric cars anytime now and into the future, continuously growing to transform that industry in the marine sector uh, right now is going through a transformation where the, the fossil fuel engines are being uh, replaced by electric marine propulsion engines for recreation of boating, uh, even passenger ferries, and even cargo ferries, if you can think about it. Um, so the future is renewables, it's a large field, has a lot of potential, and it's one that I have a passion for. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Wesley. Hi. Hi, Wesley, how are you? Hi, good and you? Good, good. Good, so my question is that, was there any challenges when building the drone for the Navy? Yes. Very, very challenging. That's a very good question. So um, in order to approach the government in general, and in order to approach the, the, you know, the Navy in general, we had to be a member of a certain uh, organization uh, that was um, uh, involved with the Navy so that we would get exposure. And uh, get some level of, of, of recognition that we were not a, a fly by night, but we were a real company trying to solve real problems uh, for the Navy. And um, uh, by being an established organization, an established company, uh, we then uh, were allowed the opportunity to participate in open requests for proposal solicitations, uh, requesting solutions to the Navy problems. And that's how we became involved with the Navy in, in presenting our proposal and our recommendations. They happened to like what we had to propose and that's how they selected us to showcase our technology with the Navy at that time. Thank you. You're welcome. Emily had a question next. Hi, Emily. How are you? Um, I had a question. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Great. Okay. I had a question. I was wondering what is the cost and the time needed to build these solar panels? Okay. So uh, right now, solar modules are considered a commodity in the marketplace, just like cars or telephones or any other mass produced item. Um, the cost for one solar module can range anywhere between uh, $100 to all, all, all the way up to roughly about three to $400 for one module. And the difference in price has to do, number one, with the manufacturer. Some are domestic, some are from Europe, some are from, uh, from the Far East. It also has to do with the amount of wattage, amount of power that each panel generates. So depending on the, on the brand and the amount of power that each power generates, uh, that's how the, 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 the cost is allocated to, uh, to those modules. Hey, Anthony. So, Hello. Hi, so you were part of the um, Sustain WDN Street Design-a-thon last time this year, right? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes, and so Trevor was there and um, so many others. And so these young people are now beta testing. We built this site in the last year with Andy and Patricia 
and Jack and so forth. And so now they're beta testing this and they're developing career pathways from where they are to where they wanna go. We had a five year plan workshop on Tuesday. And so today they're gonna to be grounding themselves in you know, what the resources are available in the uh, New Bedford uh, South Coast region so that they can start to imagine how they're gonna get these jobs that are gonna um, make them successful and contribute back to society. So uh, the question I have is, could you share a little bit about your internship program? Yes, so um, uh, both of our companies are actually registered in the state of Rhode Island and they're registered in the state of Massachusetts, okay? Both states currently provide funding opportunities for a company like mine to actually hire uh, a college intern and fund that internship program. And so we typically uh, look for uh, interested students from local universities or colleges in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and those students that are interested in working in the areas that we're working on, we then apply for funding uh, for organizations in Rhode Island and organizations in Massachusetts. And uh, once we secure the funding, uh, we actually hire the intern uh, for the summer. And in some cases, we have interns that, that have been with us uh, for the last uh, three, four years. Uh, you know, working with us uh, as they go through their, you know, educational ex experience. We have interns right now that are that have continued their education. They have gone into the into the master's uh, program, uh, um, and so we like to hire interns in, in our company. Did I answer the Did I answer your question, Marian? What do they what do they do, Anthony, for you and with you? Well, I'm glad. I've met many of them. I am glad, I am glad to mention. So I'm gonna give you some real case scenarios. Um, I have, we, we have, uh, we have Kearney Ludovici. Kearney is from CCRI. Uh, she is an industrial uh, engineer student and uh, she likes to design products. She likes uh, the uh, clean energy industry. And she's very good with SOLIDWORKS, um, which is a computer aided design drafting uh, software. So currently right now is, is designing for us a brand new product, which is like a, like a cargo box that you put on top of your car that will have solar modules, will have batteries, and it will have an outlet for you to drive to a place, a destination, park your car, and whenever you're working in the office, your car is actually recharging power. So that when you drive home, all you have to do is plug in this little cargo box that goes on top of your car, to your outlet uh, or um, a transfer switch at home, and that would allow you to power your apartment or your home at night, uh, or even a couple of days. So Kearney is actually designing that product for us right now. So she has the opportunity to, to, to continue to learn her, her CAT software. She has the opportunity to research solar panels, batteries, connectors, she has the opportunity to innovate and, and, and come up with a shape that she thinks is ideal. Uh, she's really the whole, she's really doing the whole thing with, of course, you know, some, some guidance and supervision and, and together we're going to arrive at, a, at the end product.